a political commentator, James Melville. Uh, James, I'm going to talk uh, in a special feature about this in just a little while, but I wanted to get your take uh, on the Nigel Farage saga. Uh, the BBC triumphantly revealed in terms of his bank account at uh, the top people's bank, Coots, uh, that in fact it wasn't as Nigel suspected that his bank was being or his account was being closed down because he's right wing because he's a Brexiter. It was because uh, they require their clients to have about a million quid and he didn't have enough money. Uh, I don't believe that's true, by the way. Anyway. Uh, I don't think you have to have a million pounds to be at Coots. And by the way, Nigel Farage had had an account since the 1980s. So uh, suddenly he hasn't got enough money, doesn't ring true. And sure enough, turns out the BBC story wasn't true. Uh, Nigel has now seen documents, internal documents from Coots, uh, revealing that the reason his bank account was shut down was because his views, Brexit, right wing, did not align with, and I quote, the purpose uh, and values of the bank. Uh, so he was shut down for political reasons. This is a freedom of speech issue. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether or not uh, Coots are infringing our freedom of expression and freedom of speech rules, laws here. Yeah, I think they are. Um, should be no place for this sort of thing in a liberal and free society. I thought also the BBC had set up a misinformation unit. <laughs> so it's one so for them. Not, it's one for them, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They need to be calling out themselves. I think they might, if they're truly transparent, I think they might be doing that on a daily basis on a number of different issues. But there you go. More importantly, I'm concerned about this because there is actually a form of, in a weird way, a social credit system. It's it's corporates just playing God with opinions. So, you know, I don't like your particular opinion. You're too high profile. You think differently to us. We're going to cancel you and suppress you. That's like something out of what's going on in Eastern Europe in the 70s. That's what happens in China. It shouldn't be happening here. Yeah. We need to, I'm, I'm actually really pleased Sunak said that. You know, if the government is saying we have to hold their feet on the fire to this as well, but we cannot go down this route. It's a slippery slope. You know, it's happened before with, with PayPal as well. And so we need to make sure that this never creeps into our society. Yeah. I mean, freedom of speech is everything. There's a number of freedoms that are important, but the pillar of them all is freedom of speech. And if corporates or governments or whoever it might be are cancelling people, are suppressing people, are shutting people down in terms of bank accounts simply because they have different opinions, yeah. that is a... That's a real worry. And we're just, and we we're, just looking, we're just looking now, James, at a tweet sent by the Prime Minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, uh, quoting a sto the story in The Telegraph today that reveals that he really was shut down for political reasons. And the Prime Minister said, this is wrong. Well, we all agree with that, Rishi, but what the hell are you going to do about it? Because yeah. banks should not be allowed to operate in this way. Well, we need this in some form of legislation, and I'm concerned about whether we will get that. It might just be words from Sunak, because, you know, things like the online legislation and also police crime bill, which might be, could well be suppressing certain protests. Mm -hmm. So where does the government actually stand on this? The government needs to make a clear statement, and it would be in Sunak's interest to do this, because I think the majority of people would want this, that freedom of choice, freedom of speech is everything. Sometimes freedom of speech and freedom Freedom of choice have consequences. Like we talked about with the protesters and just stop up. If they're disruptive or break the law, then there'll be consequences. But the freedoms should be there. And if we get to a situation where corporates decide, oh, we're not going to have uh, that individual's bank account because we don't like their political views, then it can create a snowball effect where others come in. But as soon as nip this in the bud now and said, that's not what this country is about. Yeah. Then it would stop the issue. And I think it's important that he does something about this now. It needs to go further than just words. I agree, I agree. At the very least, banks, because uh, uh, Coots have been very reticent to explain why they've closed down Mr Farage's bank account. At the very least, by law, banks must be forced to compulsorily to explain to people why they are shutting their accounts down, because at the moment they don't have to. And as I say, that's an affront to freedom of speech. So we haven't heard the last of this story.